From the heartland of America to every nation on Earth, this is Jack Van Empe Presents The Truth in News and Commentary. Here now are doctors Jack and Rexella Van Empe. Hello and welcome to Jack Van Empe Presents. You know, I think we all were very, very excited when we had the great celebrations, uh, actually all across the nation, remembering the moon landing. Oh, do you remember it? It was so great that Americans had done what they did, the first ones, to go out that far into space. Uh, take a look, if you will, at the Wall Street Journal. Celebrations, and yes, we had them, Mark Moon landing. Well, the nation saluted all of those astronauts uh, who've been trying to work on this and the ones who finally made it to the moon. Here, from the Earth to the moon, Armstrong looking for a safe place to land. Now, friends, did you know that he only had 18 seconds of fuel left when the Eagle touched down? 18 seconds. My, how God watched over them as they went out into space. And footprints on the moon. I just want to read something that we all remember. Of course, Neil Armstrong planted his white left boot on the gray lunar dust and spoke the first words of the first man to set his foot on the moon. This is what he said. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. And earlier, Armstrong had reported the touchdown of the lunar landing craft with these words. Houston, tranquility base here. The eagle has landed. Oh, my. Retracing Armstrong, one small step, one liner. Yes, we keep repeating it and how great it was. We never want to forget them. Lunar drama. The words of Neil and, of course, Buzz Aldrin also. How we thank the Lord for those men who were willing to go up. And <clears throat> everyone talking about it, Nolan Finley. Of course, he writes uh, editorial pages for the Detroit News Space Program defined my generation. Absolutely. And then putting astronauts on the moon is a bigger challenge today. They're talking about it again, of course. And NASA is ready to go back 50 years ago. Apollo 11 made the world a bigger place. Now we're ready to go back. Whew. And today the moon is more important than ever. You know who also landed on the moon? China. Other countries are trying to do the same thing. Look who else? Israel to the moon. And my, oh my, that's a beautiful picture, by the way, isn't it? How we thank the Lord for everything that's been accomplished among our scientists. Now, we will never forget, as I mentioned, what Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin did. And the Lord knew they were going to do it. The Lord knew that they were going to do it. How wonderful that God knows everything before it ever happens. So I'm going to ask Jack a very important question. Uh, is it found in the Bible about the moon, the sun, the stars, and all the rest? And um, that all of this will happen just prior to the return of the Lord? Jack, is it in the Bible? Oh, Rexella, this is my prophecy Bible, the one I have created by the leading of the Holy Spirit of God. Holy men of God spake as they were moved by the Holy Spirit. He's moved on me for all the extras. For instance, I have 10,385 Bible prophecies in here and they're color coded. Every time you see a color on it, you turn because at the edge of the Bible, it tells the letter where it's found in the index. For instance, D, dispensations. And uh, there are only going to be seven dispensations. As number six is the end of the church. At the rapture, the church ends forever. And that's about to happen. And then we start out with the new kingdom of heaven and earth, which I'm going to preach about next week. But listen to me right now about this. This is uh, Luke chapter 21, 25. Oh, this is dynamite. It's the word of God. And it says, Jesus said, There'll be, there shall be signs in the sun in the moon and in the stars, and distress of nations because of it. 
men's hearts failing them for fear, for looking after those things which shall come to pass on the earth, for the powers of the heavens shall be shaken. And then shall they see the Son of Man, the Lord Jesus Christ, coming in a cloud with power and great glory. And when these things begin to come to pass through these space signs, look up, look up, your redemption, the rapture of the church is right at the door. And it's happening in our generation. And we're going home and soon. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, you know, Jack, something remarkable. I didn't really realize this until I picked up the Wall Street Journal. I would like for you to take a look at it, if you will, please. Fifty years ago, we did something remarkable. Could we do it again? They're thinking about it doing it again. And on the cover of Time Magazine, the next space race, I looked at that and I couldn't help but think, you know, I have a reservation already to go up in space. Can I go with and, you? Oh, yeah, but it's going to be way past the moon and it's called the rapture. You know, some people don't really talk about the rapture, but the Bible does talk about the rapture and the homegoing of Christians. Jack, I'm ready uh, to go way past the moon up in the rapture. Rexella, you know, the Holy Spirit of God came and said, you have been the anointed and appointed one to tell the world the truth about the Bible, and I'm going to do it. And if I have to get mad and call some of these ministers today, even in our fundamentalist churches, a bunch of hypocrites, false Christ and false prophets, I'm going to do it because right now, Rexella, there's a move going on to do away with the rapture. And if you do that, you might as well throw your Bible out the window because the rapture is the most important thing in this holy book. And I'm going to tell you what it's all about. The book says, I saw a mystery. A mystery is something that's the first time in the Bible. It's called the rapture. And here's what it's all about. The dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with the dead in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. Now, I want to tell you something. Do you know that everybody lives forever? There's eternal life. God so loved the world, He gave His only begotten Son that whosoever will believe in them should not perish but have everlasting life. But there's also everlasting existence. The spirit within man is the life. The body is just the carcass that covers it. The body goes into the ground, goes back to dust and ashes, but the spirit leaves to go to heaven for the saved. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. Hallelujah. But the other one, absent from the body, first to Hades, and then Gehenna, the final penitentiary and judgment day, the lake of fire that burneth forever and forever and forever. And I don't care what you believe. I don't care what atheists believe. The greatest two popes that ever lived, Pope John Paul and Pope Benedict, bless my heart. But the Bible teaches through one of the great popes of old that there would be a time when a pope would follow these two men, Pope John and Pope Benedict, and he'd be number 112, and he was Pope Francis. Do you know that right now in the Vatican magazine, I'm not being critical, last month, 17 of the leaders of the Catholic church said he is not a genuine Christian. Oh. He should not be our Pope and they're doing everything they can now but this guy is so clever when he got together with all the men in his day he said you vote for me I'll give you great offices and the day he got voted in he says oh I can hardly believe such love. Bunk! And Pope Francis, I'll debate you anywhere in the world. I'm throwing out my invitation. I am now on every major television station, radio station in the world. I now reach 7 billion, 600 million people a week. God has called me for this hour. The Father has anointed me. He appointed me. The Holy Spirit has anointed me. And I'm going to tell you something. 
I know my Bible. I've gone through this holy book by memory 40 sometimes. I know it word for word. Why? Number one, you say all atheists will go to heaven. Where'd you get that stupid thing? It's not in your Bible. An atheist doesn't believe in Jesus Christ. You might as well become a Muslim. Eight times in the Quran they say, if you believe Christ is the savior of the world, you'll burn in hell forever. But 804 times this book says Jesus is the only way of salvation and no man that says he's an atheist is going to see God. No. God so loved the world, he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. And if you don't believe, move up to verses 16. He that believeth in Christ is not condemned. He that believeth that's condemned already. Verse 36, same book. He that believeth in the Son has everlasting life. He that does not believe in Jesus Christ shall not have eternal life, but he shall burn in hell forever and forever and forever. Yeah. Now, I wanted to say this with all my heart. I pray that what's in the Vatican magazine, I am not against my Catholic brothers and sisters. I have a new love for them because of Pope John Pope Benedict. But this man is dangerous. He also says, I don't believe the 211 verses on hell. Hmm. God forgive you. All scripture is given by inspiration is from God and is proper for doctrine, for reproof, for correction. And brother, I'll give it to you and I'll make some of those corrections when I see you if you want to debate me. I've debated 200 of the best. I've never lost because I got this book in my head and heart by memory. Well, you know, Jack, I just want to say that the Bible doesn't overlook one thing. The Lord had men of old pen exactly what he wanted us to know, and he wants us to know about the rapture. Just quickly before we go on with some of the headlines from around the world, I'd like for Jack to quote, if he would, uh, from Matthew 24, talking about going up and some of the signs pointing to the rapture. We're seeing them all around us, friends. Things are happening everywhere in the world pointing to the time that Christians are going to be taken. Uh, Matthew 24. Matthew 24, verses uh, 4 to 17, by memory. I've memorized this whole book. As the disciples were sitting in the Mount of Olives, they said unto Jesus, Master, when shall these things be and what shall be the sign of your coming? Jesus answered and said unto them, Take heed that no man deceive you. For many shall come in my name, saying, I am Christ, and shall deceive many. But there are false Christ and false prophets, and Islam is among them. And you're in danger when you talk about Jesus like you do and reject hell and say that these atheists are going to be there. Oh, man, let's get back to our text here. He says, many are going to say, I am Christ, shall deceive many. You shall hear of wars and rumors of war. See that you be not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet. Nations shall rise against nation, kingdom against kingdom. And there shall be famines and pestilences and earthquakes and divers places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. And then shall they deliver you up to be afflicted and shall kill you. And you shall be hated by all nations for my name's sake. He's talking to the believers. Right now it's going on in China. They're killing the Christians. Mm -hmm. Muslims are killing everyone that is not a Muslim. And they got 57 of their groups now in their denomination. 57 different meeting places. And they're getting ready in the United States of America to slaughter Christians in every state. I make no apologies for what I preach. My Bible says, reprove, rebuke, exhort, with all long suffering doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but they'll listen to the teachers who will tickle their ears with fables. 
damnable heresies and doctrines of devils. And I dare say, Islam is teaching it, and so are others. And I'm going to tell you something. We got these little guys now in our Christian churches, and they call themselves fundamentalists. They don't even know their Bibles. And you remind me of the little guy at Christmas time, little Jack Horner, sat in a corner eating his pudding pie. He stuck in his thumb and pulled out a plum and said, oh, what a good boy am I. That's the kind of nonsense you're getting in your churches right now. Thank God that the day of the rapture is about to happen, for it happens the day the great World War III begins. You're going to be saved out of here. I never knew that when I preached it over 2,500 times in 50 nations. Why? I had to learn more of my Bible. Are you ready? Revelation 3.10. I will keep you from out of the hour of temptation, which shall come upon the whole world to destroy them. Now, get that word, temptation. Pope Francis, I got another one for you. You just said, I'm going to remove the word temptation out of the Lord's Prayer. God forgive you. Just because you didn't know what it meant, you're going to make others do what's wrong. Temptation doesn't mean he's going to keep us from sinning. When you're really saved, he doesn't let you sin. Sin. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away. Everything's become new. The new life. Now, if he's keeping us out of temptation, he doesn't mean keeping us out of sin. We've been saved. We're changed. We're new. Are you listening? The third chapter of the book of Revelation. I will keep you from out of the hour of temptation which will come upon the whole world to destroy it. That's World War III. And thank God, he says, I will keep you from it and deliver you. Hey, stick to the Lord's Prayer. Jesus said we ought to pray it. And I believe the Father, whose prayer it is, and Jesus who said it, and the Holy Spirit, who wrote every word of this book and wrote it that we should know what I'm talking about and you should believe the Holy Bible as a Pope. Well, you know, Jack, the Bible is so very, very important today. Uh, in Matthew 24, it talks about nation rising against nation. Woo! Do we ever see that, friends? In fact, in today's paper, I picked up war or peace with Iran. Of course, my, oh, my, you hear about that all the time with Iran. Take a look, if you will, from the Times of Israel. Iranian parliament designates all U.S. military forces as terrorists. Well, they don't like us very much either. U.S., there's a credible threat by Iran, of course. U.S. accuses Iran of preparing campaign of attacks. If we wanted to develop nukes, the U.S. couldn't stop us. That's what they're saying. And then again, war is unavoidable if U.S. does not lift the sanctions. They're threatening us. Iran warns it would raise Tel Aviv to the ground if attacked by the United States. In other words, we would destroy Israel if you attack us. Iranian boats tried to intercept British tanker. Well, you know what? Not just do they hate America, but anybody who gets in their way. Well, Britain's one of them. Brand new S-500 missile system can tackle attack from space. Oh, my. And again, Iran, ballistic missile program not up for negotiation. Just one more here, Jack, then I'm going to go to you. Danger grows for U.S. military drones. Of course, they shot down already one of ours on June the 20th. I'm going to stop there. You know, friends, I could just go on and on and on. It's all around the world. But Iran is really uh, coming up, believe me. Uh, when it comes to threats to the United States, Israel, and anybody that gets in their way, including Britain. Jack, uh, war is just around the corner, I think. Oh, Rexella, we've had headline after headline in the last two, three months about Iran and what they're doing to the point where right now even President Trump and the vice president, one of the greatest Christians ever, if anything happens to Trump, we would have a 
president that loves God and is a soul winner, has Bible studies at home. Pence is wonderful, but I believe he's affecting spiritually. Donald Trump, amen, thank God. Let me tell you something. For all these years, I preached over 1,800 times the coming war with Russia, according to the Bible, and 50 nations of the world when I was younger. And then I quit. And I've been preaching it all the time on television the last 30 years. But I've got a new slant on it now. It is still the coming war with Russia. Ezekiel 38 and 39. Gog and Magog. Meshach and Tubal. And that is Mosach, Moscow, and Moscow. Moscow. And the other, Tobolsk, is southwest of Siberia. And all the kings of the east, the Chinese and all the Orientals, come along with Russia. They are the two powerhouses. But then you start getting the other nations. Gomer, Gomerland, Germany goes with them. And you've got so many names. Turkey, under Tagarma, with them. And I want you to know that when I was a 21-year-old man and going into all these nations, 50 nations and preaching this, I knew my Bible well. But there was one thing I didn't know. And now Trump comes out and his vice president says, it looks like World War III will begin because of Iran. Because they have 57 different groups that are Muslims in the world consulate churches, which total 222 million people. And he says they're aching for war. They're getting ready for war. And when it hits, God help us. The Bible says there's going to be a river of blood 200 miles long flowing to the bridles of the horses. There never will have been anything like it in the past. Never again will there be anything in the future. And thank God we've been raptured. We're gone. And when it happens, it lasts for seven years. And we're getting our rewards in heaven for that seven-year period. And we come back the last day of the Battle of Armageddon, the last day of World War III. And we miss that as well. Seven years we missed during the seven-year war. And thank God we never have to worry because when you arrive, our God says, now you don't have to worry about the second death, the lake of fire. You'll never be there. You are the saved. But I've got news for you. If you're alive now and you go up, you won't even die the first time. Right. First time or second. Oh, come quickly, Lord Jesus. That's the blessed hope. And the Bible says we should be looking for that blessed hope and the glorious appearing of the great God, our Savior, Jesus Christ, because it's going to mean so much to the Christian world. And then they set up the kingdom of heaven and earth. Heaven above moved to earth beneath forever, forever. And there will only be believers here at that time. Never again. Will there be a war? Never again will there be a killing. Never again will there be a murder. Never again will there be alcoholism and all the rest. Oh, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Amen. Amen. We can be looking for that, Jack, but so many people are looking around. <clears throat> they see all the signs and they don't know what to make of it. All the famines, the diseases, the earthquakes, the killing of Christians and everything else. I will tell you, though, the bad things are pointing to something that is good, and that, as Jack referred to it, the coming of the Lord, and when we go home to be with him. But you have to be ready. The Lord said, come unto me. Will you come? He died for you. Will you accept him? Will you open your heart? Jesus said he'll forgive you of anything. He'll cleanse you. He'll make you ready for heaven. Will you just open your heart to him and say, Lord, I'm ready. I'm looking for the coming of the Lord. Pray this prayer with Jack and open your life and your heart to the Lord right now. Jack. You believe this book? It says, Whosoever shall believe on the name of the Lord Jesus Christ shall be saved eternally for the war, from that war and everything else. So pray it. You have a choice to make, to believe or not to believe. Believe is heaven. Rejection is Gehenna, hell, Father. Speak to hearts. Oh, I have felt your presence, blessed Holy Spirit. I felt your power on me. 
Now speak out there. Say it. Lord Jesus, thank you for dying on that cross for me, for all sinners. Only one way to heaven is to receive what you did. And Jesus, I do. Come into my heart now. I pray this in your holy name. Amen. Amen. If you prayed that prayer, will you please write to me? I'll send you this little booklet, First Steps in a New Direction. You won't have to worry about what's going on around us. Just keep looking up. Our mailing address is Jack Benneby Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. Now, you know, friends, we've got a brand new offer for you this week, a socialist America, you know, for the United States, to be following in the footsteps of the USSR and China, moving towards socialism, and you hear about it all the time. Are we in America really going towards socialism? What would it do to our country? Oh my, oh my, what is socialism? So many people really don't know, so they're willing to accept it. Are you really willing to accept something you don't know about? What is the result of it? How would our country be if we opened it to socialism? Where would it carry us? Oh my, everything is answered on here. And I couldn't believe when I saw this again and our offer, I realized it's so important that we offer it to you. Please, this is one of the most important offers you could have because you're hearing about it right now. Amen. Oh, Amen. absolutely. And Amen. now, I'm so happy for this offer. Here is our announcer to tell you how you can receive it. Chuck? Thank you, Rexella. My friend, to order a socialist America. Have your credit card ready and call toll-free 24 hours a day. 1-800-JVI-7777. To order by mail in the U.S., send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impe Ministries, Box 7004, Troy, Michigan, 48007. In Canada, send your donation of $24.95 to Jack Van Impe Ministries of Canada, Box 1717, Postal Station A, Windsor, Ontario, NINA6Y1. Now back to Rexella. Thank you so very much, Chuck. And you know, friends, Jack's going to try and do something very special with this, aren't you, Jack? I'm getting that in the hands of President Trump and his vice president before the election because it's dynamite for their sake. Oh, yes. So make the call or write immediately. We'll get this into the mail as soon as we hear from you. Oh, how good it is to have faith. And I want to leave you with a wonderful, wonderful thought. Faith is not a leap into the dark, but a step into the light. Amen. We we'll look forward Amen. to being in your home again next week. Until then, remember, God cares for you, and so do we so very, very much. Bye-bye. The preceding program was sponsored by the partners of Jack Vanapie Ministries.